How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be going over how we can add effects to our buttons or actually to any view we click on and it's going to look like this. So if we tap on this button you're going to notice it expands and gets smaller and if we hold it down it's going to expand and stay there and it's going to work for both of these views. So each time we tap on it it's going to expand and decrease in size. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you is how to add this boomerang effect to any view. So when you tap on it, it adds a nice animation to the UI. So to get started, you want to go ahead and create a new Xcode project. And the very first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a new file, a new Swift file and click on next. And it's going to be called button press actions. And we're going to provide some code in here that we can use to create a modifier which can be attached to any view we want so we can add any effect we want. And I actually went ahead and found this code on a site called serialcoder.dev. So definitely check them out in case you're curious for more cool tricks such as this one. But uh, we're going to continue with the code that this site has implemented and we're going to type in import Swift UI. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create a struct called button press, and it's going to inherit from view modifier. So inside here, we're going to create two variables, and one's going to be called on press, and the other one will be on release, which are going to be two empty functions. And they're not going to return anything, so we can just go ahead and actually copy this and paste it below and just change this to on release. Now we want to go ahead and create a body function, which is going to have the content of some content and it's going to return some view. And the content is going to use a simultaneous gesture. And we're going to use a drag gesture for this, which will have a minimum distance, minimum distance, of zero. Then inside here, we can type in dot on changed, and that's going to be affected when the user touches the button or the view for the first time. It's going to trigger this action over here. And we're just going to go ahead and create a closure inside here. So for blank in, we're going to trigger on press. And we also want to trigger what happens when it ends. So on ended. And the same thing, underscore in, and we're going to type in on release and trigger that. So that takes care of the first part of this. Now we need to go ahead and turn this into an extension of a view so we can call it as a modifier. So right below all of this lovely code, we're going to go ahead and type in extension of view. And this is going to take a function which we're going to call press events. And we need to provide them as parameters. So on press, which is going to call at escaping. And inside there, it's going to just trigger an empty function. That doesn't return anything. And the same thing is going to happen for the on release. So go ahead and copy that, paste it, and change on press to on release. And all of this is going to return some view. So inside here, we can go ahead and type in modifier, and it's going to take a modifier, which will be our button press. And inside here, we can finally go ahead and trigger on press and on release. And the on press method, of course, is going to trigger on press, and the on release will trigger the on release. And I just want to state that I've also included the source code to this project in the GitHub repository down below. So in case you get stuck at any point, feel free to go down there and copy and paste the points that just might be confusing to you. But otherwise, we can now move on to our content view and continue with the code implementation. So inside our content view, we can go ahead and close this sidebar now because we will not be using it anymore. And we can get started with two at state variables. So at state private var is pressed, which will be set initially to false. And at state private var counter, which will be set to zero initially. 
Now the first thing we want to cover is creating a V stack because inside here we want to insert, of course, the text, which is going to hold the counter. So we'll get the easy part out of the way. Give it a font of dot system size and weight. So here we'll go ahead and give it a system size and weight of 60, a weight of dot bolt. And then for the rest, we can just delete that part. And we're going to go ahead and provide an opacity. So if is pressed is true, we will return 0 0.4. Else we're just going to return the full opacity. And I also want a scale effect so it can jump out and in. And for this, we'll do the same thing. Is pressed, question mark, 1.2 if it's true. Otherwise, if it's false, we just want to return the regular size. So now we have a huge zero on the screen and it doesn't really do anything yet unless we go ahead and change this to true for whatever reason. Then you'll notice that it will turn gray and a bit bigger, but we want to trigger that through tapping. So let's go ahead and create a button or a view which will simulate a button. And to do this, we're going to create a Z stack and create a capsule. Now the capsule is just going to be the frame of the button, so frame, and here we'll type in 150 followed by 50, and we can delete the alignment like that. Then we want to go ahead and provide a foreground color, which will be set to dot blue, and we want to provide some text, which is going to say tap me, exclamation mark, but it looks awful because it is black and we want a better contrast than that. So we'll add the foreground color. And now we want to do the exact same thing to the button. So go ahead and copy the opacity plus the scale effect and paste it in there. With the exception that I want the scale effect to be 1.1 and I want the opacity to be set to 0.6. Now the first thing we should do is add a on tap gesture. So inside here, we just want to increment the counter by one. So that's just a normal tap gesture. But now we can go ahead and also call our custom modifier. And this is going to be called press events. So as you can see, now we can actually decide what happens when we click on these two, when we have the on press and on the on release. But as any modifier, we can go ahead and create a closure. And the first one's going to be for the on press, which is going to take a with animation dot ease in, ease out and a duration of 0 0.2 and we want to set is pressed to be set to true and as the trailing closure we can go ahead and call on release and inside here we want to go ahead and type in with animation just as earlier and we're going to set is pressed to false so just by doing that we can go ahead and modify what happens when it gets pressed and when it gets released. And if we add the animation, we can go ahead and click on the tap me button. And you'll notice that it's going to increase when we tap on it, just like that. But of course you can add some other crazy effects or you can even make this huge if you want. We can change it to 2.0. And when we go back to the tap me button, you'll notice that it will get really big. So I recommend you play around with this. You can add some 3D rotation effects. You can add some really cool stuff here. And I found this to be one of the easier implementations of creating this button effect, but that just about covers what I wanted to teach in today's lesson. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.